everyone. I'm Joy Ditto, President and CEO of the American Public Power Association. And I'd like to welcome everyone to the first in a series of recorded conversations I plan to have with folks inside and outside of the electric utility industry. I hope that these conversations provide valuable information and perspective to members of our association and beyond. I wanted to start this series by speaking with some frontline public power workers. These are people who keep the lights on and keep our communities and our country powered and moving forward. We are obviously having this conversation during a somewhat unprecedented time for most of us in public power in dealing with recovering from a global pandemic. It's presented us challenges and really challenges to all industries, but, but to public power as well. And in particular, we want to focus on that today. As an essential service upon which almost every other essential service relies, we can hardly afford to fall down on the job, and the folks we're talking to today certainly have not. So today I welcome Jeff Diffendapper, who is the Assistant Superintendent of Electric, Distribu Electric Distribution at Easton Utilities, which is on the Eastern Shore of Maryland, and Josh Sorum, who is the Substation Manager for the Grand River Dam Authority in Oklahoma. At this point, I'll ask you each to introduce yourselves briefly and talk a little bit about the work you do for your utilities. Jeff, go ahead. Hi, I'm Jeff Diffendaffer. Like you said, I'm the Assistant Superintendent of Electric Distribution at Easton Utilities. Um, I've been a lineman here for 22 years. I've uh, been the Assistant Superintendent for a couple years now. Um, we just keep the lights on. I'm just uh, power line work, uh, overhead underground, uh, and everything in between. Well, thank you so much. Uh, Josh, please go ahead. Yes, my name is Josh Sorm. I work for the Grand River Dam Authority. I've been here 11 years. Uh, primarily, my background has been in uh, substation maintenance and testing. Uh, and we also work, of course, you know, with the distribution line department, generations, a uh, little bit of everybody, anything that substation connects to. Uh, and this has been a quite challenging time, but, uh, a lot, lot of other workers in the uh, utility industry or the power industry can tell you they're kind of used to working in challenging times anyways. Uh, definite alignment and uh, so on, you know, used to going out in challenging times. This is a different situation that we're not used to battling. So, uh, you know, we have had to make a lot of changes and adjustments as we go. Josh, thanks for that. And I really think this pandemic has underscored how essential electricity is. I mean, I think people sometimes take it for granted when things are sort of situation normal. We, I know that it's not situation normal even on a day-to-day -day basis because we're responding to storms and other outages, but uh, most Americans don't even recognize that. And, and I think during a pandemic, just the fact that you're underpinning every other technology out there, including internet service, telecommunications, I think has really been highlighted. And it's certainly something we've focused on. We've been talking to our federal government partners up here to make sure that that's really recognized. Sometimes that's been challenging, but it's, it's definitely something that people are starting to come around to more um, obviously and more sort of directly during this. But you guys really have been amazing. I mean, just keeping uh, the lights on on a daily basis, being at work, being in the field. So I want to get into some questions for you guys. And... Um, you know, this is a little bit of a fun one um, we'll start out with. So um, if you were telling a story to your grandchildren about what it was like in 2020, how would you describe it? I'll, I'll take off on this one. Uh, man, I would I would tell the kids uh, 2020 was unlike any other year. I know I've, I've never seen or heard of anything like this. Uh, you know, some places that are normally populated and busy, uh, we have been through and some of our other workers in this department have been through and it's like it was like a ghost town there for a while. Mm -hmm. I never left my home or property there for about two months and uh, did the work from home thing as long as I could. Uh, I don't know which pandemic or other situation you'd compare it to, but I, I hope we never have to go through another one like this and I hope this one ends soon, but it is definitely... Uh, makes you look at some of the smaller things, you know, just like socializing with friends. Uh, I don't ever remember another time when you'd be walking down the street and see people wearing masks and 
doing the social distancing and all that. Uh, and I just tell them, you know, it was uh, hundreds of thousands, you know, uh, didn't make it through this just in America. But it was a very challenging time, but something I think we'll all learn from and be stronger in the future because of it. Definitely, definitely. Um, Jeff, did you want to take that one? Yeah, well? um, I guess if I was talking to my grandkids uh, about this year, I'd probably tell them that the year 2020 is probably the year we got the most done because there was no traffic. The <laughs> were closed everybody was home um we could work uptown and not have to worry about you know the cars and the traffic and everything else we've done a lot of reconductoring and a lot of uh, a lot of uh revamping our old stuff taking advantage of the situation um it's been different uh everybody's got the masks on you know we we had to split up and i I'll tell my my grandkids. I'll say this: this is the year that we split up, and we went from having fourteen guys to six and seven guys, and still mm -hmm. doing everything. So we got a lot done, but it's been it's been tough. We're still, you know, it's still going, and um, that's, that's just about it, I guess. Okay, that's great. Thank you. So I'm going to start with you this time, uh, and and ask this, which is lots been written or, or you know, um, shown on TV about doctors and grocery store workers, and really deservedly so. What's it been like keeping America powered during COVID-19? What's it felt like? Um, what's What have been the discussions with your colleagues? Uh, and, you know, just kind of give us a sense of that. I'll be honest with you, I'll say it's, it's like every other day. It hasn't changed. Um, we're going to keep the lights on no matter what, no matter what kind of pandemic is going on, no matter what, what's out there. Um, we're still coming to work. We're still, you know, we had to split up for a little while um, and just split crews, but we were still coming in every day and still doing the same thing. So um, it hasn't been that different other than a little bit of less traffic and a little bit more clothes, you know, but the, but the safety stuff. Yeah, and, and that actually, I'm just going to kind of uh, key off of that. And Josh, I want you to answer that same question, but just to key off of that a little bit, you know, public power, but the entire electric sector is really focused on safety. So this to me seems like an extension of that um, sort of safety culture. And so maybe Josh, when you answer, um, if you want to take that on as well, and we can certainly come back to you, Jeff, as well, if you want to talk more about the safety piece. Yeah, and like you said, all of our guys are required to be out in the field. So as far as work, a couple of larger projects that required out-of-state contractors that we'd be working at the same location may have got pushed off and postponed. But as far as day-to-day -day routine maintenance, and like you say, we did, we split up and go, you know, no more than one crew at a substation at one point uh, during the peak of it. And then we got back to working multiple crews in uh, the power industry, uh, like many could tell you, uh, they they put a sign out in front of our headquarters here that said heroes work here. And I think that is a, a solid statement, you know, because yeah. we have to deal with this all the time. You know, we're working in a dangerous environment with high voltage and somebody makes one mistake, you know, they, they won't live to make another mistake. But uh, I think a lot of people do appreciate it, especially if they've been around the industry and know a little bit about it. Uh, you know, your your uh, police, firemen, grocery workers, nurse, and all that are probably getting more recognition at this time. But I think anybody that plays an essential role in this uh, is should, should be you know a notice for it. Absolutely, and I'm just going to again take this opportunity to thank both of you for your work and to thank your colleagues by extension for all, for all that you've done for your communities and, and just exemplifying what our, all of our communities, um, all of our members and their, their uh, essential workers and their communities have done to keep the lights on. So thank you again. Um, so I'm gonna uh, switch to a little bit more about kind of keying off of that safety piece. Um, kind of what specific precautions did your teams and leadership take to prepare you to work during the peak, of, the peak of the pandemic, were there some changes? I, I, we already heard uh, from Jeff about kind of dividing up the teams. Were there other things that you all um, did to make sure that you all were safe and could continue to keep the lights on and not get exposed to COVID-19? Okay. Um, well, first thing we started out, um, we did start um, splitting crews. Half of us were staying home, half of us were working. Um, we were cleaning a lot. I mean, we were disinfecting, we were wiping out all the trucks, all the computers, uh, 
stuff that we never even thought about. Coke machines, you know, everything that there was. Um, our, our company provided us with tons and gallons and gallons of disinfectant and, and wipes and sprays. And, um, so if, when our shift ended at the end of the week, we'd have to, we took, I, we come in two, three hours early every Friday and just spent hours cleaning and wiping down for the next crew to come in on Monday. Um, so, uh, and that's every, that was from our employer. You know, that's what they, that's what they wanted us to do. Great. Thank you, Josh. Josh, what about, what about your, your teams? A lot of the same stuff. There was a, <laughs> many, many changes as far as the, the sanitation. Uh, you know, like I say, we're trained to work in challenging and dangerous environments, but not not in this uh, exact situation. So, yeah, a lot of cleaning. The substation crews typically roll two to three deep in one pick, or, you know, one uh, bucket truck or service truck, go out. There's almost always two crews at that site. So, we kind of banded together as a team and receive vehicles and borrow vehicles from other departments with our departments. So everybody uh, of the 14 of my staff was in their own vehicle. They go, they leave from their house, go to the substation. We communicate back and forth, telephone, however, and then they go straight back home. Uh, we, uh, in administration, let us develop a plan and submit it with each department generation, they're uh, two weeks on, two weeks off, rotating shifts. Uh, since we're out in the field, ours is a little different. We tried about two weeks to three weeks of having some stay home, but the work was piling up and it was gonna get to a point where we couldn't catch up. So we was worried about reliability. So everybody was back in the field uh, and traveling separate, sanitizing trucks. They even purchased some ozone machines. Uh, we bring them by once a week or ever so often, run it in there. It supposedly disinfects the whole truck, masks, social distancing, all that. And it, it changed over time. As it went on, you know, we, we kind of got back to more than one crew going there. And then now that it's start getting, starting to, numbers are starting to rise, we're probably going to go back to just one crew at one site. But still, they're going to travel in separate vehicles and just limiting exposure any way we could. We even had porta potties delivered to, uh, locations that contract jobs was going out and having them sanitized uh, frequently. And like I say, just wiping stuff down, and you know, everybody sanitized as much as possible trucks, tools, everything. Great. Well, thank you all for that. Um, so, you know, now since your teams were sort of maybe uh, divided up and, you know, you had teams on and off, how were you able to kind of keep together? Um, did it did it actually improve your relationships with your smaller teams? Um, how did that work in terms of your just relationship with each other? How did you guys band together to sort of take on this pandemic and to, to deal with this adversity? I, I'll take that one. Um, I, we split up. Um, we took a um, an offsite location, actually an old warehouse that uh, we set up our a second distribution crew which is the one that I'm overseeing. And I, the guys that I have seven guys and the other, other crew has seven guys and there, and we've become like, just like best friends, you know, since then, like we are working, it's not like it usually is. We have, I'm working with people that I don't usually work with all the time. Uh, and same thing for the other crew. And, and we have some younger guys who had to, had to, you know, pick in and start, start kicking in and start learning faster than they normally would. And, I, it's been great for us. I, I love it. I was just like a little family that we got. I mean, we still got to do our social distance. Of course, we got to take a bunch of trucks to the job, like uh, Josh was saying, but we're all still, still family. And, um, and I, I, I've enjoyed it actually. It's been fine with us. Good for us. That's great. How about you, Josh? Yeah, pretty much the same thing. Uh, a lot of our guys have grown closer because of the different stuff we're having to learn. Normally anytime, you work through something with somebody, you know, you develop a stronger relationship for them. Like you said, there's many trucks there, uh, but the power industry as a whole, lineman, substation metering, relay techs, generation, you name it. Like I said, they let us borrow some, some automobiles from different uh, departments and a uh, hurricane hits or something, you know, we, you, you can always count on people from the power industry to send mutual aid, Line workers, you know, they're always the one that have to go in. We've sent substation techs with them before, so the, we're kind of used to that. But yeah, I think it's made everybody uh, closer. 
you know, other than like you say, they're driving <laughs> driving separate on most occasions. Right. It's it's interesting how there are always silver linings. As much as this has been a tragic situation for many who've lost their lives or been seriously ill or just suffered economic hardship, there are these little silver linings and little benefits we can take. And it sounds like that's one of them for you all is kind of developing some relationships that and bonding together. Um, that's that's amazing. So. I think my last question, um, and I'll uh, certainly after you a- answer this question, if you want to add anything that I haven't asked before that you really feel like you want to impart to our viewers, um, you can certainly do that. But I think this kind of um, dovetails up what we were just talking about and, and more about your, your customers themselves. And when you've interacted with customers, even from a social distance, um, how have they reacted to your work, um, to your provision of service in your communities? Uh- a lot of them have been out and about. A lot of our work locations are kind of remote, but we've had many thank us and you know tell us how appreciative they are of us for uh, working out in this. And some of them was kind of surprised we were working out in it. And I said, you know, the no, no matter what happens, we're always we're always going to be out there in the field because just imagine if this situation uh, in the state it's in now, if everybody was to lose power and how drastically worse it could get, you know, from that. So, uh, yeah, we just, you know, everybody just kind of banded together and worked as a team and fight through this. And hopefully this thing will end at some point soon. Thank you so much, Josh. Jeff? Um, yes, our, we're, we're talking about our, our customers, right? Our, yes. Our, yeah, our customers customer. that we have here in Easton are amazing. They, they, they love us to death. The gratitude that we get from our customers on every day is 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 fantastic anyway but now as with all this going on they are res- respectful of what we do they i mean they have huge respect for what we're doing now I and mean, they, they come out and it's like we you know we appreciate everything you're doing um we understand how much harder it is it's hard on a, on a normal day but now it's even worse and they they get it and um we've had nothing but but good stuff from our customers right here they, they're very happy to see us they're very respectful of us and they really appreciate what we're doing i think even more so now Amazing. Well, I think just to sum up from what I heard today is you all are uh, representative of the bravery and the dedication and the um, just essential nature of public power and of the electric sector. And I'm very proud to represent you here in Washington, D.C. So thank you so much for, for participating in this, for being willing to share your story. And, um, and I look forward to, to seeing you all in person at some point in the future. We very much look forward to it. Please let us know if you need anything from us at any time. And with that, I'll sign off and thank you all for watching and look forward to more future discussion on issues of importance to our industry. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Thank you. Thank you. It was nice to meet you. You too. Take care.